Hey guys, welcome back to the musical. My name is Cole, and yes, we're talking about yet another album from 1980. Oh my gosh, what a great year for music. And this is Killing Joke's self-titled debut album, which was massively influential in the industrial music scene. It was way ahead of its time. The production work on this album is phenomenal. The only negative thing I will say about it is the lyrics aren't really all that interesting, but everything else is just really good stuff. So I'm excited to share it with you guys. Let's dive in with track number one, which is called Requiem. Yeah, my goodness, just the sound of this song is just so amazing. It's, it's a feeling that will persist throughout this album, just an incredible atmosphere that they deliver. And, you know, this song is pretty much a, a very dark and depressing song because they're talking about the end of the world when you've got warring nations, uh, you know, they're trying to have peace talks with each other, but w words don't mean anything anymore. Right, and as he says, that's when you got to start to worry, because when diplomacy fails, that's when you start launching nukes at each other and all sorts of bad stuff like wars. So you know, peace only exists with diplomacy. So this is you know, a warning uh, to all of you uh, leaders of nations out there to try to keep an open mind. But anyway, I love this song. Let's move along to track two, which is called War Dance. no the worst has happened we've gone to war with whoever it is right and now this is the music to march to it's our war dance right um but you know he was referring to like a nuclear war in the past song which is easily the dumbest thing in the entire world it seems obvious right obviously that you know if you launch a nuke and destroy a country okay you win but then you can't live there it's all irradiated so like why the why would you nuke anything you can't mine its resources you can't live there you know this seems obvious to anybody with a brain but then you've got just insane people like you know the dictators of the world like in north korea who probably are not smart enough to uh keep their hands off the button so to speak i um, mean i mean thank god they haven't done it yet but like if I've learned anything in my 34 years of life is that there are really stupid people in the world and really stupid people can do really awful things. Like for instance, here's a tangent. You know, I've been hearing about all of the awful violence against Asian Americans in America these days because of Trump's, you know, Trump keeps saying it's the China virus, right? All of the fringe Republicans all the fringe elements there keep calling it the China virus. So all your not very smart, gullible people hear that and they start beating up and killing Asian people because they think it's their fault, you know? So in other words, like, okay, 
To smart people, you wouldn't want to nuke anything because there's no point. You would destroy the Earth and you can't live there even though you win. But to, to you know, dumb, gullible people uh, committing these hate crimes, I mean, those are the kind of people that would do it. So you, you want to just keep in mind that just because something seems obvious, uh, <laughs> trust me, there's somebody who would do it. There's some idiot out there who would push the button and end everything. So anyway, uh, that was a rant. So that's War Dance, a really cool song. Let's move on to track three, which is called Tomorrow's World. Yeah, I mean, that really is the ultimate horror, at least for me, right? Your country's at war, and you have a draft, and you have to go and fight, right? I mean, obviously, certain circumstances, uh, it's just inevitable. Like, you have to fight, or else you're going to be taken over by Nazi Germany or something, right? And you can't avoid it. Um, but even if that's the case, I mean, still, just what a horror to be forced to kill other human beings, right? I mean, warfare is all about dehumanizing the enemy, right? Making them seem less than you, making them, see, making them seem below you. Uh, you have to dehumanize them in order to do it, right? Because if you think of each soldier as like an individual person with their own personality and their own family and hopes and dreams, I mean, somebody like me would just go crazy I would have such PTSD after war. I just know I would. I'm just too much of a humanist. So this poor guy in this song, you know, he's going to be facing the ultimate uh, awful situation. It doesn't get any worse than that. But anyway, so that's Tomorrow's World. Let's skip along to track five, which is called The Wait. So this is kind of an interesting song, especially when he says motives changing from day to day. So I guess how I interpret that is this guy, in order to just like mentally be okay with this situation, is he finds reasons to justify what he's doing. Because obviously he was drafted into this war, so maybe he doesn't really want to fight, but he has to fight. And so the only way he's going to get through it uh, mentally and psychologically is to, you know, as I mentioned, like dehumanize the other people and come up with excuses for why they need to be killed and why he's got to do it, right? Because if he doesn't do it, then his poor girlfriend or wife at home and his kids at home are going to end up being uh, either killed or like put in horrible situations, right? You do it for your family, basically. I guess would be the number one reason 
for anybody, for, for any soldier in war, is you do it for your family, so you get to see them again, and so they get to live in peace, right? Everything else is just kind of BS. So his motives are changing in the sense of, like, he keeps trying to figure out uh, ways to justify what he's doing. So anyway, I like this song quite a bit. But let's move on to track number six, which is called Complications. The sun turns green from his penthouse window, even though he says he has no shelter. So basically, I imagine they won the war, right? But the earth is just so screwed up at this point, and everything's all bombed out, right? All the buildings are bombed out. It sounds like, <laughs> like okay, you won, but now everything has gone to shit, and the world sucks, and there's irradiated everything everywhere, and, you know... You have to rebuild everything, right? So like, okay, you won, but was it worth it? Was it worth all this fighting and all the bombing and all the nukes and all the whatever? I mean, it doesn't seem like it. <laughs> you know, you got to start over from scratch. So this poor guy, um, he survived, but he didn't really come home too much. So like, okay, he's alive, and that's good, I guess. But, you know, uh, the rest of his life sounds like it's going to be... Uh, he's going to be in misery. So anyway, complications. Uh, this poor guy. Let's move along to track seven, which is called SO36. Again, a kind of another post-war situation, right, where this guy is back home in his city, but his city is totally bombed out and destroyed, and it sounds like, you know, at least half the people are dead. It's just totally quiet. There's nothing to do. It's really depressing. Um, I mean, there's no, there's no winner here, right? <laughs> I mean, technically they won, but there's no winner here. Um, but anyway, this song is interesting, and most of the songs are interesting just for the atmosphere that they create with the drumming and the guitar work and the sounds of the guitars, like the effects on them. Just the whole thing is just an amazing, oppressive atmosphere that perfectly captures the mood and theme of the album. I mean, no wonder it was so influential on a lot of metal and industrial music later on. I mean, remember, this came out in 1980. Like, geez louise. That is... Uh, forward-thinking music right there. So anyway, there's not much else to say about this song other than it sounds cool. But let's move on to track number eight, which is called Primitive.
Yeah, so it kind of seems like our poor hero has entered a new dark age, right? Because uh, he keeps talking about, you know, primitive intuition getting in the way. And, uh, you know, it sounds like maybe the supply chains are broken. And, you know, he's back home and there's not a lot of food to go around and the water is poisoned and the days are uh, all clouded by, like, poisoned air and water, right? So it sounds like... Um, society is kind of broken down as it as it would if there were nuclear uh, if there was nuclear fallout right because all the supply chains are tainted by radiation you know and everyone's kind of fending for themselves so like we're reverting back to our primitive state where we're just barely trying to survive right i mean in the modern era obviously everything is so much easier you've got you know, people who work at jobs, who uh, do all sorts of things for you that you don't have to do, like agriculture and teaching people and making sure the trains run and cleaning the water supply and like any number of things uh, that you never have to worry about. But they have to be done and someone has to do it. But in this post-apocalypse world, right, not only are like half the people dead, so no one, so there's literally no one doing it, but also like everything is so screwed up um, that it's basically like society is broken down and we're back to our primitive, uh, you know, living out on the, on the tundras of Africa state or whatever, uh, or the deserts of Africa. Anyway, so this poor guy, he survived one hellscape, which is the war, which was already a terrible thing and probably... Uh, is living to see an even worse hellscape, which is the rest of his life in this post-apocalypse. So he's not having he's not having a good time. But anyway, let's move along to my last clip for you guys, which is from the last track. It's called Change. Oh my gosh, I do not envy this guy. So basically the key lyric here is you're waiting, change, right? So basically what that means to me is, you know, he can only do so much. He only knows so much. I mean, if you think about society right now even, you only know so much. You know, I'm looking around my room right now and I literally could not make anything in this room, like anything, <laughs> right? But imagine if the world uh, went to war and we had this post-apocalyptic scenario, I mean, I would be completely useless. I don't know how to hunt. I don't know how to make anything. I don't know how to grow anything, right? So I imagine this guy is having the same kind of predicament where, like, he has to wait for smarter people to fix the world <laughs> and to make things happen because he doesn't know how the heck to do anything. You know, he's not smart enough. He doesn't know enough science. So it sounds like his entire life now is a waiting game because obviously he grew up in a world like ours today where you have all these great conveniences. You have the internet and grocery stores and coffee shops and blah, blah, blah. Uh, so like he was used to that, but now he's just thrust into this complete new world, this new dark age where he's at the mercy of smarter people. So, oh my gosh, definitely don't, nuke other countries is the moral of, the, of this album um but anyway so yeah that's killing joke i mean it's just an incredibly influential album i know i've said that before but i mean just the sound of the the songs the atmosphere is just dead on for this kind of apocalyptic world that they want to you know have you visit 
for 50 minutes or however long it is. Um, just really cool stuff. I hope you like it. I hope you thought it was interesting. You know, let me know in the comments whether you enjoyed it or not. Uh, and if you have some theories. But if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. It would really help me out. But yeah, that's Killing Joke for you guys. Check them out and have a good one.